Good afternoon, uh, Craig Lapsley, Fire Service Commissioner and Ken Lay, Chief Commissioner of Police. Uh, welcome. Just give you a quick update of where we are today. Uh, obviously, total uh, number of fires that are still burning in the state is 18. Um, for, of those, uh, I'll run through those in a moment, but we've got a total of 2,500 firefighters out there, 2,500 firefighters working today um, across multiple areas, including the outer metropolitan area of Melbourne, uh, La Trobe Valley and East Gippsland. A fleet of 70 aircraft is operating to support them on the ground, which is excellent and has been supplemented by aircraft from New South Wales over the last number of days. The three key areas is Kilmore and Wallen, um, known as the, is the Mickledon and Kilmore fire, and overnight that fire has moved um, significantly, increased in size and is now 23,000 hectares in size, still listed as going, has one emergency warning uh, current for it, which is for the Kilmore, Kilmore East and Bylands area. Um, on that, 200 fire trucks alone working that and 19 aircraft. That's a significant operation and will remain so um, for the rest of today and into tomorrow. Obviously, uh, that's a fire that started on, uh, on the weekend and it's proved difficult to get a control line around the entire area of the fire and obviously as the wind conditions increased yesterday afternoon into the evening, it uh, caused significant uh, concern to the Wallen and Kilmore communities and even saw that it impacted on houses in the Wallen area and, and, uh, and likewise the Kilmore area. Some of the firefighting was exceptional. Um, the, the efforts of CFA, MFB, DEPI, Parks Victoria and also New South Wales Rural Fire Service uh, have been noted by many to say that the fire was running hard up onto roads and the firefighters were able to, in many instances, um, suppress it or chase it. And that, uh, that in itself is a significant issue. Likewise, uh, significant aircraft operations in that, uh, in that location yesterday and have continued again today. Mall, the open cut, the Hazelwood uh, uh, coal mine is still burning. It still has not impacted on the ability to produce power. Um, but it is in, a, in an area that uh, is causing some level of, of difficulty to suppress. Uh, we've now got extra resources in there and are looking at an extinguishment strategy of how we will actually stop that fire. Uh, and that, uh, that in itself is a problem in the sense that it is putting significant black smoke over mall and is causing obviously concern and, uh, and health messaging and is important for um, the mall community. Uh, East Gippsland fires are still going, uh, haven't moved too much in the last 24 hours due to the weather conditions, but are in still in deep seated forested areas, and for that reason, um, significant resources remain in East Gippsland. Um, from that, um, I think there's a couple of other issues that are worth mentioning. Smoke across Victoria, we've had reports of uh, people ringing in to Triple O, and rightly so, thinking there's a fire. However, we've seen that widespread smoke has occurred across. Um, the areas of Victoria adjacent to these fire locations. For example, the Kilmore um, Wallen area, there's smoke now spread uh, a broad area um, extending into central Victoria and also back in the metropolitan area and people need to be mindful of that uh, and that will remain the case for, we believe, some days. Um, we also reflect on the fires of Sunday and there is obviously many lessons to be learnt from, 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 uh, from Sunday. But it's also worth mentioning the saves that occurred on Sunday. We often talk and reflect on what we've lost, but there has been significant saves and uh, extremely good work done by not only community members, but fire brigades. And if uh, for those people that live in the outer metropolitan area and have fire that's moved around their properties, there's been significant um, work done prior to the summer, obviously. So some people have heeded the message to prepare their properties appropriately. And I say that in the sense that it's congratulations to those that have done that. However, fire, fire is extremely random. In one street, we've seen a house be totally destroyed and only next door, the house escaped with no damage at all. So fire itself is random, but also the preparedness around properties is critical. 200 fires reported on Sunday, and uh, that's a large number of fires in any, in any figure. Uh, in closing, before I hand over to uh, Chief Commissioner Lay, uh, the weather for the next couple of days. We move back to hot weather. The northern part of Victoria will move into the high 30s and low 40s. Central Victoria will be similar and southern Victoria will be in the mid 30s. So we're back there. Um, there will be potentially severe fire danger ratings and uh, if that occurs, we'll consider total fire bans if they're appropriate for those locations later today. But I think the message is we're back into hot weather 
and we can only hope that this rain um, occurs on the, on, in the Victorian uh, landscape uh, over the weekend. Uh, Ken. Thanks, Craig. Um, I'd just like to reiterate Craig's point about the work of the firefighters over the last um, week or so. Um, it has been quite ferocious, the fires we've seen over the last few days, and their work has been quite outstanding. I know both Craig and myself are very, very proud of what they've achieved. Um, but again, I reiterate Craig's warning that um, we're only halfway through this summer period. We've still got <coughs> a long, long way to go. We've got uh, currently initial impact assessment teams in the field. We're confirming that 34 houses have been destroyed since the 7th of February. We have advice of another 20 houses um, that may be destroyed, otherwise unconfirmed, until we get, can get people into the fire scene to confirm that. These numbers are likely to increase in coming days as the fires come under control. Roadblocks across the straight, uh, state, we have 12 that are currently manned by police members. I understand it's difficult, I understand it's frustrating for local residents, but our police members are acting on the best available evidence as to whether allow people into these scenes or not. Now, as the Fire Services Commissioner has said many, many times over the last week, the primacy of life is the key driver in this operation and police are implementing the advice of the fire um, services to ensure that we protect life wherever possible. We will open these roads, allow access um, when we can, but that will be based on the best possible local advice. Just in relation to arson and um, deliberately lit fires, currently we have seven, 16 investigations underway we are comfortable that nine of those have been deliberately lit and we're assessing a further seven in relation to their cause. We have fire investigators and our forensic people at these scenes. I'm pleased to say at the moment we have no outstanding people in the, any of the fire areas. And again, I think this is probably testament to the, um, to the key approach of saving people's lives and protecting lives has been our, the the key driver and I'm pleased to say um, that is um, well, that is a very good result for us at the moment but having said that um, the fires are still burning um, there's still considerable danger to people and property I'm happy to take any questions as I'm sure Craig is as well um, there are a couple of investigations that are underway that we do have people of interest and um, I would be um, hopeful that uh, some will be brought to a conclusion rather quickly. Uh, 18 fires are still listed as going and obviously those that are the three uh, key ones is Kilmore Wallen, uh, Morwell and uh, fires in East Gippsland. Uh, currently, um, for the whole of the fire season, including the Mallee, the Grampians and fires prior to uh, this weekend, is 350,000 hectares has been burnt across the state, uh, which is a significant uh, figure in its own right, with still a, uh, a fair amount of uh, fire season in front of us. How does that compare with previous fire season? Uh, well, it's, very, it's very difficult to, um, to compare one to the other due to the weather conditions, but if you go back to uh, 1985, which was Avoca Miraburra, um, Central Victoria, significantly large fires, and again in 1977, which was a similar season, um, it's, it's probably on par. So uh, they're the two seasons that we've seen similarities in weather conditions and fuel conditions. And uh, we would have thought in the trends and the work that we've done that around over 300,000 hectares would be um, achievable to burn this year in an uncontrolled environment and we're already above that. So it might prove to be an above average from what the averages have indicated. Um, look. It, it, I think we're, we're in a position now that uh, people think that it needs to be a 40 degrees day and 100 kilometre hour um, winds, where I think we're now seeing that's not the case. I think we've got such a dry environment, the fuels are available to burn, and we don't need all of those factors to see an intense fire. 
Uh, I think it proved it yesterday. At Kilmore, um, we were in the mid-30s. We had wind speeds that started off to be 30, 40 kilometres. Um, they weren't running at 80 kilometres. They were 30, 40 kilometre winds and saw fire to be very ferocious, intense, and was challenging to control. However, our, uh, our firefighters did a great job, but we still pack, impacted on property. So I think the, the key message now to Victorians is to be aware of anywhere in Victoria, uh, in, the, in the heat of the day, it doesn't need to be 40 degrees, the mid-30s, um, with wind speeds that are 30, 40 kilometres would, will do the job to see us have intense fires. So I think that's important, that we don't need to have these um, replicated days of last Sunday to see fires move around and move around some, somewhat uncontrolled. Are you disappointed that um, Yes, it is disappointing and uh, obviously I think that's a, a community and societal issue about um, how people behave in the landscape and I think people need to be, take, um, need to be very responsible about fire um, and the, the potential to light fires. Uh, How do you think more can be done? Um, I think the Chief Commissioner might be best to talk. That's great. Um, look, we have another, a number of operations underway to try and prevent fires um, being lit. Um, I made the point yesterday that we actually go and visit people that we know have a propensity to light fires and um, um, let them know that we're, we're interested in their movements. Um, we have uh, many, many investigative units out across the state um, in the high-risk areas. But um, the com arson is com complex. Um, we're seeing evidence of quite young children um, lighting fires and we've seen evidence in the past of people with clear criminal intent lighting fires. We're seeing evidence of people being totally reckless with, with tools and machinery which are, are causing quite devastating fires. So um, is there more to, more to be done? Of course there is. Um, we need to understand the issue. Um, uh, we need to understand the issue better. We need to keep uh, the community best informed about how um, to be aware of um, suspicious behaviour. We need to encourage the community to be involved in helping us and that is are reporting suspicious behaviour whenever they see it. But it is a very, very complex picture. This is not just about a criminal going around um, lighting a fire here, there and everywhere. There is, it's a whole continuum of offending. How many people are police keeping an eye on? Um, let me just say a number of people. Are you able to go into a breakdown of where those 34 property losses have occurred and where most of you, you said there are 20 other possible losses? Yeah. Um, they, these are mainly in the in the Kilmore area, so we're, um, we'll be able to provide some more advice on that um, as the day go, the, as the day goes on. But let me say it's still very early. The the fire is still bur burning, um, so the ability to get in there and actually make those assess assessments is very very difficult at the moment. Um, Yes, yesterday we um, concluded one investigation and um, we have um, we've charged uh, one person. Um, that was the um, a Gisborne, uh, sorry, a Bendigo related fire. Um, it was a juvenile we charged. Last question. Just to clarify, you have one or two children? Um, it, was, uh, it was two children, one's been charged and one's um, not of an age where um, that person can be charged. You mentioned that we're only halfway through the fire season. Is there concern that the situation can escalate over the next month and a half? Uh, I think that's a reality. Um, the fact is that uh, February is the, the traditional um, uh, time that we see our largest fires and we're only halfway there. So we shouldn't underestimate what uh, February will bring and the potential is there with the amount of fuel, the weather conditions. <coughs> and, and as I've said before, without rain, without significant rain, we don't change the, uh, the, the potential of what this brings. Just in closing, I, I might just uh, refer to one statistic for you. Um, the Fire Ready app is, uh, is one of the methods of how we encourage Victorians to access information and warnings. We've currently got um, 497,000 downloads of that app. Now that's, uh, that's increased significantly from where we've been in Victoria before. So that's important in itself. Nearly 500,000 Victorians have downloaded the app. It's interesting though that 85,000 of those downloaded it on, on Sunday the 9th of February 2014. Now that, that's great. I'd have to say congratulations for doing that. The little message I've got though 
is that when you download it on the day of extreme fire danger, it's a fair chance that you haven't used it, set it up, and actually know how to use it correctly. My message to Victorians, if you want to use these types of methods, download it today, download it whilst the, the fire danger is of a lesser need, not on the days where it's severe, extreme, or above. Let's get, um, let's get in Victoria where, where we as community members are as prepared as possible and understand where to access the information and do it now. And I think that's a really important thing. It's great to see that we've got so many people downloaded it, but I suppose it's a little concerning when 85,000 people downloaded on the most extreme day that we've had for some time. That tells me that not everyone is prepared and they're getting prepared at the last minute. So that's just a little message, um, but I, like I say, it's great to see a half a million people have actually downloaded the app. Thank you.